every business tends to have something unique. But I think if, if you're just producing something which is me too content that they can get from another article, then why go to your article? I think you have to build, for me, it's about building brand and authority in your space. And so for us, that meant longer form content. Generally, longer form content builds you more authority. It's also you're competing with a lot less, something like, you know, less than 5% of all articles are over 2,000 words. Um, so immediately you're competing with less content if you're producing in-depth content. So for us, it was less is more. It was like, okay, let's, let's produce less content, but produce a really significant um, piece of content. And let's really hope to be the story for the day. So we're not going to produce a piece of content every day because they'll get sunk. But if we can produce one piece of content a month and everybody talks about it for one day, that's great because it builds our name and authority, et cetera. So our strategy was much more about producing really good content and trying to be the story for one day. So, and I think there is a thing about people do need to spend time thinking about, you know, who's going to share your content, who's going to link to it, why are they going to do that? So every piece of content you write for your blog needs an amplification strategy. Strategy may be two grand a word, but you know, who's going to share it? Who's going to link to it? Who's going to talk about it, et cetera. Um, so what we did with our research is we, did some in-depth research, which we thought might be useful. So it might've been research on headlines, which we did last year, or it might be research about content trends this year, looking at how many shares things get. Um, things that we think will be helpful to our audience. Um, but we then had a strategy for how do we get it out there? So in our case, what worked well for us was having influencers. So we might say, right, who are 10 people that our audience really respect? Um, and can we build relationships with those people by following them, commenting on their blogs, meeting them at conferences? It takes six months or more to build a relationship with somebody. Once we've done that, we could then share our research. So we tended to, so my latest content trends report, I shared it with like sort of eight or nine people before we published it saying, what do you think? And I incorporated some of their comments in the report when we published it. And that meant they were more likely to share it, more likely to talk about it. And that helped us get some traction. If on day one of when we publish it, we ask everyone to share it on the same day. So suddenly we know there are at least 10 or 12 people with reasonable followings all sharing it. It gets a little bit of traction. Our aim is to be that story for the day. We might supplement that with some Facebook advertising or Twitter advertising. We would also normally talk to a few journalists up front in terms of, you know, would you be interested in this story, et cetera. And when we did the headlines piece, we had a number of journalists wrote about it last year. And, um, you know, we have, in one case, we had an instance where just one journalist sharing it got retweeted about three or 4,000 times, just one, uh, one tweet really. So, um, so we tried to work with journalists who might be interested in the content as well, because I say that that's the hard thing is you produce great content, but how, people are so busy. How do you get them to see it? And so our approach is let's produce really excellent content, generally comprehensive, long form content, which is, which is really hopefully insightful and helpful to people. We don't, uh, gate our content. We don't believe in gating content. I know lots of people say produce great content. You should gate it and gain their email addresses. My view is that you're not really giving anything away. Then you're doing a barter exchange. You know, give me your email address so I can spam you and I'll give you the report. And people don't know whether the report's any good before they do that. So we don't gate anything. We just make it freely available. And if they want to sign up to the blog or anything, that's up to them. But we we don't ask their email address. They just get the the content really. Um, but for me, it's just, just how do you get it out there? So whatever piece of content, you do need some form of amplification strategy, really. And to say, for us, the content that breaks through tends to be research content. And we've done a lot of research about content. And we know that people, getting shares is hard. So, you know, the median number of shares is four for a, for a piece of content. So um, getting links is really hard. It's, it's less than one. It's, <laughs> you know, the median share and median links is zero. So it, it's really hard to get links. So uh, you need to write content that gets links, really. And certain types of content get links. So research content gets links. What I would call referenceable content gets it. So what is content? Content that answers questions tends to get links. Guides tend to get links, et cetera. Um, so there's certain types of content that gets links. It tends to be long form content. So we focus on that content. We want our articles to get links. That's really important for us.